I think we can all agree that habits are extremely important, and I'd actually argue that they're one of, if not the most important factors in defining success. Now that could be success in life, success in programming, some kind of field, sport, whatever it is that you do. But what I find with myself is that what I'm able to consistently do without having to think about a ton is really what leads me to longer term success. So with that said, I wanted to make a video here and outline for you what I think are the habits of God tier programmers. Now, by no means am I calling myself a God tier programmer. A lot of the things I'm taking here are things that I've seen from programmers that I've worked with, which are much more experienced than myself. And I've kind of noticed these things and tried to work on them on my own because I've seen, hey, programmers that are way better than me always do this, 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 and this. If I want to get to their level, chances are I need to build similar habits to what they have. So with that said, let's get into this video and talk about the habits of God tier programmers after a quick word from our sponsor. Before we get started, I need to thank PyScriptor for sponsoring this video. PyScriptor is a free and open source Python integrated development environment with all the features you'd expect in a modern IDE. It's also natively compiled for Windows to use minimal memory with maximum performance. PyScriptor comes with features designed to enable smooth and efficient Python programming. These features include a syntax highlighting editor, an integrated Python interpreter, full Python debugging with support for remote debugging, integrated unit testing, and integration for Python tools like PyLint, TabNanny, and Profile, and so much more. PyScriptor users can run or debug files from memory and use a code editor, to-do list, find and replace, and integrated regular expression testing. Embarcadero also offers free GUI libraries for Python that are integrated into PyScriptor. For example, their Delphi FMX or Python GUI library supports multiple platforms, including Android. This package is used to build cross-platform GUI applications for all Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android target platforms. Find more info from their free ebook and download PyScriptor from the link in the description. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into it. Now, as I get into these different habits, I think it's a good exercise to ask yourself, do I do this? Is this routine? Is this a habit I have? And if it's not, to genuinely challenge yourself and say, would I be a better and more effective programmer if I adopted this habit? I'll let you decide that for yourself, but let's get into habit number one. So habit number one is designing and planning your code before you write any. Now, this is something that seems really straightforward. It seems like it should be easy to do, but I can tell you I've known about this habit and known this is an important thing to do for many years, yet it's still not something that I consistently do before I write every piece of code. Some of it might come down to laziness, maybe arrogance, thinking I don't need to write a plan or a design, but I can promise you that every great programmer I've ever seen, even if it's minimal, always comes up with some kind of design or plan before they jump into the code and start writing. Now, there's a ton of different reasons for this, but the main one is that you want to have a good picture of what it is that you're actually building, what you're doing, and kind of the task you're accomplishing before you just go and start writing a bunch of code. The idea here is that if you dive in and write a bunch of code, it's possible you could come up with a good solution. But in a lot of cases, you're not going to fully think through the problem before you start writing. And later down the road, you're going to realize, hey, I've made a mistake here. This isn't scalable. It's not flexible enough. I don't know how to test this or how to document this. And you have to go and change a bunch of code or rewrite code because of your lack of thinking and planning uh, kind of at the starting process. So again, really a difficult habit to pick up because a lot of people want to just get in there. They want to start coding. They want to feel like they're getting something done, but it will save you a drastic amount of time to come up with a thorough plan or some kind of design, especially if you're building a more complicated system. But with that said, the only way to pick up this habit is to do this no matter what type of code you're writing. Even if it's a simple function, even if it's a really small program, even if it's something you've done a hundred times before, it's still a habit that you need to build and you need to say, okay, what is my plan? What are the steps I'm going to go through? Maybe you need to draw out some kind of UML diagram. Again, depends on the complexity of what it is that you're making. But even if you're a beginner programmer right now, practice this habit by before you starting to code, spending five minutes listing out everything you need to do, coming up with just a general outline or kind of the big picture of the program that you're building, maybe breaking it down into smaller tasks and just thinking through the entire process before you go in there and start writing code. So moving on to habit number two, I have 
testing. Now, obviously testing is important. You need to have confidence in your code. You need to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do. And if you're working for any kind of large company, you have a critical feature, or really you just wanna make sure that your code is consistently working and that it's not gonna break in future changes, you need to be writing automated tests. There's all different kinds of tests you can be writing, but this needs to be a habit and something that you do consistently. Now, even though I know this extremely well, and I tell you guys on the channel constantly to test your code, this is still something that oftentimes I end up not doing. It's a habit that I've really struggled to build, and that's because a lot of times I'm lazy. I don't wanna write a test case. It's brutal oftentimes to have to write your test, and it's just something that a lot of times I'd like to skip over and I'll say, oh, I'll do it later. Now that's not good, that's something I need to work on, but what I've noticed kind of forces me to write the tests or helps me build this habit is to write them before I write my code. So I actually write the test cases before I go into building a solution or I'm constantly thinking about during the design and planning phase, how am I gonna test my code before I start writing it? By doing that, I make my job a lot easier when it comes to eventually writing the test cases because I've thought about how am I gonna segment this code out how am I gonna test this? And a lot of times I end up reducing the complexity of my code to make sure I'm going to be able to test it later on. So again, a difficult habit to pick up, something that's really annoying. I sympathize with you, no one wants to write tests, but you absolutely need to do it. It gives you confidence in your code. And it's a habit that I'm continually working on and that you should probably be working on as well. Moving on to step number three, we have documentation. Again, this is one of these things that no one likes to do. It's a pain, it's really annoying. Us developers usually don't wanna be writing out full sentences or even writing comments, but you absolutely need to do it. It saves a ton of time for other developers and for yourself, especially if you're coming back to the code base after a long period of time. Some examples of things that I like to document are installation steps, common problems or debugging, a lot of times I run into some kind of weird error and I usually like to document how I fix that so that if I ever run into it again, I have the solution or if another developer runs into it, they can have a look at that. Obviously documenting your code, so that could be writing comments, doc strings, even just readme files kind of explaining the general idea of what's going on and then even how to contribute to a repository or how to kind of change the code or add things. There's a lot of other stuff you could potentially be documenting all of these things are a pain. They're stuff that a lot of times people leave until the very last minute, but they are very important to be doing and they're gonna save you and your team a significant amount of time. So another habit to think about, are you documenting your code? Do you write comments? Do you write readme files? Are you explaining installation steps, common errors, how to contribute to your code base? Even if it's simple, I think you should get in the habit of doing that. And one way you can kind of practice doing that is every time you upload a GitHub repository, you can write kind of some instructions for running the code, how to get stuff set up, even maybe a little paragraph about how you've designed the code or where some of the different parts of the code lives. I understand it might not be extremely useful on a smaller project, but it's a good habit to get in the practice of doing, because if you're working on larger code bases or working with a ton of different people, you're going to need documentation. All right, moving on to step number four, I have automation. Now, when I say automation, this can be stuff like setting up your environment so that you know all of your keyboard shortcuts. It can be automating testing or automating deployments or automating just like setting up a certain folder structure or different files in your code base. The general idea here is that all of these really good programmers that I've seen don't waste time doing repetitive stuff. They're programmers after all, and they always like to automate pretty much everything they possibly can. It's actually a little bit ridiculous, some of the automation stuff that I've seen from them, but automating, adding stuff to their calendar, automating, uh, doing testing, automating release notes, automating literally anything you can possibly think of, even if it's like a five or 10 second task, if they know they're gonna be doing that a ton of times, they'll spend the hour, two hours, whatever it is, to write a little script that's gonna automate that away. So just something to keep in mind here, these really good programmers, the reason why they can oftentimes get a ton of stuff done is because they spend the time up front to automate, set up their environment and make themselves as efficient as humanly possible so they can spend a majority of their time writing code or writing tests or whatever it is that they need to do rather than performing these kind of monotonous and repetitive tasks. So 
so moving on to habit number five, I have writing clean code. Now, the point here is that you should get in the habit as early as possible of writing clean and quality code, no matter what you're coding. Now, that's what I've noticed with these kind of God tier or really experienced programmers. It doesn't matter if they're working on a hobby project, on a non-important feature, on something that's critically important. They always have the same code quality because they're so used to writing high quality, clean code that they do it no matter what. It's like second nature. They don't have to think about writing clean code. That's just how they code because they've been doing it for so long. So I think you need to ask yourself here, do I always write the best quality code that I can? Am I sometimes rushed? Am I sometimes, you know, skipping out on variable names or functions or dividing my code and making it simpler? And if you are, you might just want to consider kind of the repercussions of doing that, that you're not building that habit of consistently writing quality code. And you actually have to think more carefully. OK, how do I write my code in kind of a cleaner manner? Once you get in the habit of just always doing that, it doesn't become difficult anymore. It becomes simple. You're just always writing code in a quality way. I know this was a bit repetitive, but I just want to drive the point home that these guys that I've seen that are really, really good programmers, they don't think about writing clean code. That's just how they code because they've been doing it for so long. So with all that said, I think I'm going to start wrapping up the video here. If you're interested in getting better at programming, you can check out my course, ProgrammingExpert.io. If you want to learn blockchain and Web3 development, then check out my new course, Blockchain Expert. They'll both be linked in the description. Regardless, I wanted to make this video to try to give you some inspiration and information about how to be a better programmer. Hopefully you take this to heart and start working on some of these habits. I know that I am doing that consistently and I'm slowly improving in all of these areas and seeing how much better of a programmer I can really be. With that said, I'll end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.